How do they get away with this? That's what my clients ask me over and over again. My clients, ex-clients, who are innocent and victims of prosecutorial misconduct. One of them is here, Micah Kimball. Many others are listening in on the Zoom, which include Cole Stewart, John St. Augustine, and then, of course, there's Barry Morphew. Also here are, uh, is Ray Moore, who suffered prosecutorial misconduct down in El Paso County, and Clarence Moses L., and everyone should know Tim Masters. All of these are Colorado cases. And all of these people ask that question to me or their criminal defense lawyers. How can this happen over and over again? And you know what my answer to my clients and what their lawyers tell them? We don't know. We don't know why it keeps happening because nobody is doing anything about it. There's absolutely no deterrent to prosecutors committing misconduct. The Morphew case was dismissed a year ago tomorrow. It has been nearly three years since Suzanne Morphew disappeared. And the prosecution keeps claiming that they're going to find her. Their case was baseless to begin with. Their affidavit they filed was like a tabloid filled with misrepresentations false information, and concealed extremely favorable evidence. But they went through a year putting Mr. Morphew behind bars in a cage for five months, concealing evidence of innocence. And I'm happy to answer questions um, once I finish this initial statement. And it took a defense team to fight the prosecutors in the case, which included Linda Stanley, Jeff Lindsay, Mark Hurlbert, Aaron Pembleton, Dan Edwards, there are two, his bar number is 7938, Bob Weiner and Grant Groskebauer, who worked together to conceal favorable evidence in Barry Morphew's case. And who suffered from that? Not just Barry Morphew, an innocent, accused individual, but his daughters, Macy and Morphew, who are listening to this press conference right now. Prosecutorial misconduct hurts the innocent accused, it hurts victims of crimes, and it hurts the public and taxpayer money. Thousands and millions of dollars wasted in cases like Barry Morphew's, Micah Kimball's, Ray Moore, Clarence Moses L., Tim Masters, and Cole Stewart. As a result of the experience that Barry went through, which concluded a year ago tomorrow, where Linda Stanley and her team at that time was comprised of Linda Stanley, Mark Hurlbert, Robert Weiner, and Grant Groskebauer, who stood in front of a court and told the judge that they weren't dismissing the case because the court had come down so harshly on them for their repetitive and pervasive and egregious prosecutorial misconduct, but because they believed after two hot summers, they would find Suzanne Morphew's body and all of a sudden needed her body in order to prosecute Barry Morphew, who they held in a jail cell for five months and then on a $500,000 cash bond subsequent to that. Well, six months later, in October 2022, we had a hearing to try and get Barry's thousands and thousands of dollars of property that was held 
by the Sheriff's Department as a result of all the searches that were conducted at Barry Morphew's house, home, and vehicles. And D.A. Hurlbert told the court, well, Judge, I mean, we didn't do that in bad faith, you know, when, when you know, Missy Tan is claiming that we, we moved to dismiss the case in bad faith. We really did believe that her body was buried under six feet of snow that we just couldn't get to in April before the trial was set. And he said, we were wrong about that. Well, they're wrong about a lot of things. They were wrong about who did it, when it happened, how it happened, and what happened, because all of those alleged facts in their affidavit were false. So now it's nearly a year later, and with this immense amount of misconduct that happened in the Morphew case and all the cases preceding it, I founded an organization called Protect Ethical Prosecutors. This organization is to deter prosecutors from committing this type of misconduct ever again in this country. And the way to do that is to hold them accountable, because they're not. Judges do a fair job at trying to, but as you see in the Morphew case, after the judge pounded Linda Stanley and her team for violating the rules and laws of this state, they were found by other judges 14 times to have violated the rules and the constitution of this state and this country. So much so that two weeks ago, another judge dismissed a first degree murder case for the same type of violations. They didn't learn. Linda Stanley's office didn't learn. And let me be clear. Even though Linda Stanley is an elected public official who should be equal under the law, just like all the rest of us, the people that worked with her on the Morphew matter aren't just Chafee County 11th Judicial District DAs. I'm going to try and fix this. Yeah, that'd be great. It doesn't happen again. The DAs on Barry Morphew's case, one of them is an Arapahoe County District Attorney, Deputy Grant Groskebauer. Bob Weiner, he's in a private law office that Linda Stanley contracted to help out with the Morphew, failed Morphew prosecution. He's a private lawyer who used to be a DA in Jefferson County. Jeff Lindsay, he's now a DA in Pueblo. Mark Hurlbert, he now is contracting with the 11th Judicial District, but he's been around. He was actually the prosecutor in John St. Augustine's case, which is also mentioned in the PEP website someone who also suffered at the hands of DA Mark Hurlburt, prosecutorial misconduct. So the history of this prosecutorial misconduct, it keeps going and it keeps happening because nothing happens to prosecutors who commit misconduct. Judges try, they slap their hand, don't do it again. And then you see the first, second, third time, just in the 11th Judicial District, finally now, a first degree murder case was dismissed by a judge. Now I can't guarantee this, but I have a strong feeling and suspicion that that is gonna be appealed. That instead of the DAs in that case and the prosecutor saying, you know what, we made a mistake. We failed. Let's get back to the drawing board and figure out why we keep failing the system. Why we keep failing victims. Why we keep failing the wrongly accused. Why we keep failing the people who are paying taxes. You think they would do that? Go back, that's what people do, right? A plane crashes, they go back and they look at the root cause of why the plane crashed, right? 
They don't just appeal the decision that was made. No, the plane didn't crash, it wasn't our fault, but that's what's happening in this country. And it's happening in the Levin Judicial District. Now, in order to deter prosecutors, what's not working is judges. Yes, there's an Office of Attorney Regulation Council, which is underneath the Colorado Supreme Court. And on March 29th, I filed an 80-page complaint that I'm making public today. Here it is, printed out. It's on the website. You go to the tab, About, Stories, Barry Morphew. It's the first document that's identified under his name. The reason why I'm making that complaint public is because people need to know. Our, our community, our state, and our nation need to be aware about this epidemic. 30% of exonerations in this country are the cause of prosecutorial misconduct. The average number of years spent by individuals wrongly held in prison is 11.5 years. It's time to change. And the one way to change it now might be the Office of Attorney Regulation Council. And my request is that they open a complaint against these seven prosecutors. And my request is that they take seriously my request to disbar these prosecutors, if not severely discipline them for their misconduct. And it took me a year to write this because I wanted to make sure it was factual and supported by evidence and documents and statements that were made by the prosecutors themselves who went after Mr. Morphew wrongfully. But I don't, as much as I think the Office of Attorney Regulation Council is a means to deter prosecutors, it surely hasn't done its job all over the country. I think it's something like 4% of all prosecutors who have been found to commit prosecutorial misconduct end up disciplined. For example, in Tim Masters case that you all might remember is a really, really sad, profoundly sad case of a young man who was wrongly accused of rape and murder of Peggy Hetrick. He was held in prison for 10 years when his legal team found that the prosecution team themselves hid the DNA um, that was uh, found on Peggy Hetrick that matched what happened to be Tim Master's neighbor who was a doctor and was actually friendly with the prosecutors. And the prosecutors knew about this and hid it. Tim Masters was released from prison. He was able to sue um, the law enforcement team, not the prosecutors, and he came out with $10 million. But you can't sue prosecutors in the, in the United States. That's the purpose of PEP. You can't sue them. There was a decision made that says, you know what, let's give these people who have more discretion and power in the entire country the ability to do whatever they want with just inking a signature on a piece of paper. Who, when, where, what, they can charge whoever they want. And they can't be sued. Isn't it incredible that you could be a doctor and say, you know what, my nurse couldn't make it today, but I'm just going to go ahead and do the surgery anyway. I didn't have time to read all the notes that were written about what allergies this patient had. Oops, I guess they suffered a death. What would happen in this country if we allowed people who have people's lives in their hands get away with it? There would be a revolt. But here in this country, we can't sue prosecutors when they intentionally withhold evidence of innocence in people's cases that they're going after. You can't do it. They have no skin in the game. So why would they stop? They're not losing their licenses. Judges are barely, you know, slapping their hands and saying, don't do it again for the 14th, 20th time. So something needs to change. And I hardly know a single person that says this isn't a great idea, except for one body, prosecutors. They don't want it. So it's time to make this issue public. It's an epidemic in this country. And it's time to make it known 
who is committing the misconduct and when it's happening so that lawmakers can make changes where they need to be made changed. These public officials need to, need to, need to follow the law just like all the rest of us do. They're equal under the law, just like us, but they surely aren't treated like it. So I'm happy to answer any questions anybody has. What is your message to Linda Stanley and the prosecutors in her office? Find Suzanne. What are you calling on the state to do by filing this complaint? My hope is that there might be, I might light a match for these prosecutors to actually stop looking um, in the same place they've looked at for the same for, for the last three years, ignoring um, the evidence that's going to lead them down a trail to maybe where the true perpetrator is or where Suzanne might be. So my message to Linda Stanley is do your job, follow the law, follow the rules. Stop victimizing people in your community. You use the word disbarred, though. That, that's a serious. I, I, I take what happened to Barry Morphew very seriously. He is a human being. She authorized an arrest and hold of a human being. For one day, that would affect any of you to be held for something you didn't do. He was held for five months in a cage based on information that wasn't true. She has a license to practice law more powerful than most other individuals in this entire country. She should have to answer for that. So yes, I don't believe she should have a right to prosecute other human beings. Do I honestly think that the Attorney Regulation Council will do anything based on my request for investigation and the other investigation that was open? I don't know. My hope is that they will. Um, that's why I wrote such a tediously long complaint, because I didn't want it to get shoved under the rug. That's why I'm making it public, because I want people to be able to say, hey, you know what? That prosecutor, they had evidence of innocence in my case. Or I want this to be able to be an opportunity where other defense lawyers who know that perhaps other, other prosecutors were named in this public complaint, maybe that happened to them too. And so maybe with this pattern on top of a pattern, the Attorney Regulation Council will do something. Are such complaints not to be made public normally? No, you can make them public. It just never happens. And it's very unusual for prosecutors to have complaints made against them. You know, think about this. We all hold, all of us in, in this entire country, we hold prosecutors up on this pedestal. They are really like white knights. And they are um, traditionally believed to be royalty of some sort. You know, we're going after justice, we're convicting people, we're getting the bad guys. And so a lot of defense lawyers, first of all, are scared to file complaints. It takes a lot of time to make them as robust as I believe the one that I filed uh, is. But at the same time, you know, judges are also fearful because their prosecutors are in front of them day after day after day. And they don't want to have to go and complain against the very prosecutors that are in front of them. They need to work with them. Same thing goes for criminal defense lawyers who are working with the same prosecutors day after day after day. And there's concern about backlash. There's concern that maybe you can't get a plea bargain on another case that you have because you made a complaint on another case that you had. So there's a lot of jockeying going on in the minds, I believe, of lawyers, but it's our ethical duty to file complaints when misconduct rears its head. And, I, and, and, and that's going to be Pep's job, is to make the Office of Attorney Regulation Council and the public aware of when this occurs in this state and in other states. This is a national, a national uh, 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 project. So when you talk about how you want them to be sued, are you saying 
personally sued, kind of like with the police reform bill where they have a cap on, on police? What's your plan for that? Would you have to go to the legislature for that? And does it happen anywhere in the country at all? So that's a great question. So the question that um, Carol asked is, um, you know, how, how do I see this um, absolute immunity getting eradicated? What would the bill look like? How would I, who would have to do it? Um, well, on the PET page, um, there is a resources tab. In that resources tab, there's a subheading, policy. And there are all the attempts of different states who've tried to pass similar types of laws. Who bars these from going forward? Prosecutors. That's who's against it, right? But there actually is the bill that I wrote, that I tried to get through in 2021. Actually, 20, 2020. And uh, it had two sponsors. It's, it, I put it in the, on the website. It's there for everyone to see. Prosecutors can rip it apart if they want. They can do whatever they want to it. It's been uh, heavily edited and reviewed and analyzed by legal scholars all over this country. And it stands firm and it says basically that, yes, they will be held personally liable. Their immunity will be stripped, both absolute and qualified. It doesn't need to be a lot of damages. We're not saying that they need to be sued for millions of dollars, their salaries worth, but some skin in the game, like police officers. Look, police officers haven't stopped being police officers because the potential they can be sued. Everyone was scared that was going to happen. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. So. There's a bill, it's drafted, it's on my website. Lawmakers need to pass it in every state. What you're gonna hear is a bunch of prosecutors saying, no, don't do that to us. You know, we're gonna have to get malpractice insurance. Well, guess what? I have malpractice insurance. I can be sued. The nurse can be sued. The pilot can be sued. Your hairdresser can be sued. Everyone can be sued. Not a prosecutor, lift people away for the rest of their life. They should be sued. Do you plan to file a patterns and practice complaint with the Attorney General's office? Do you think victims' rights have been violated, a tactic that was successful in leading to the resignation of 12th Judicial, 12th Judicial District Attorney Alonzo Payne? So the question is, uh, do I plan on filing a pattern and practice complaint with the Attorney General's office similar to what happened in the 12th Judicial District with Alonzo Payne regarding victim rights issues? Um, it's a, a two-part answer. One is that in the complaint, um, I think I, uh, let me see which claim group it is. So uh, we filed this um, uh, with 12 different claims. And claim group 11 is violation of Victim Rights Act, prejudicing the administration of justice, which is a violation of Rule 8.4. Our allegation um, with that is that uh, Mallory and Macy Morphew are Barry Morphew's daughters, and they uh, supported their dad all through um, the prosecution. And it appeared that the prosecution was very um, perturbed, dismayed by that. Um, they were traitors, you know, to a murder prosecution and were treated as such. When the case was dismissed suddenly without any kind of notice to uh, the defense team to Barry Morphew, um, it was certainly a surprise coming to court on April 19th, 2022. But the shockingly sad thing is now I know why there's a constitutional amendment for victims' rights in Colorado. And that's because Mallory and Macy, whose mother has disappeared, who they love very much, as well as their dad, weren't told that the reason for the dismissal, forget the dismissal, was because they believed they found their mother's body and they weren't told. It was me that showed them the computer of this electronic filing of the dismissal seven minutes before uh, the DA stood up and dismissed the case without prejudice. It was wrong. That's a violation of the rules. It's a violation of the law. So whether or not I it's, it's a little complicated because Dan Edwards is one of the individuals we're making a complaint against. And he was with the Attorney General's office and contracting through the Attorney General's office um, when, when some of this misconduct occurred. He wasn't on the case the whole time. It's identified in the complaint. 
that he was with the office September 21 through March 2022 uh, during the term of the prosecution. So um, I am going to make uh, Attorney General Weiser aware uh, that I filed this complaint. Obviously, it's public. I will lead him to it, um, and hopefully uh, members of his team will discuss that with me. I have quite a concern, and I haven't uh, communicated this yet uh, to his office, but I found out that Suzanne Morphew is on a um, list of um, domestic violence victims um, uh, that, um, that haven't been found, missing, missing individuals, and that's wrong. Um, you know, to, in order to uh, claim that she was a victim of domestic violence, I think you'd have to have some kind of finding or information to, uh, to put that on a public website. So I will be contacting him about that as well. In the complaint, you allege that the CBI and the FBI helped conceal evidence with the DA's office. Yes. That's a hefty allegation. Why, why do you say that? You know, um, the question is, um, I say in the complaint that CBI and FBI um, worked with the DA's office to conceal evidence. Why do I say that? I say that because um, in, simple, in simple short order, there was DNA that was found in Suzanne Morphew's car that the CBI and FBI agreed um, because it was found in Suzanne's car uh, was crucial to a criminal, possible criminal episode, that it was part of this alleged criminal act. This DNA did not match Barry Morphew, but it matched um, other individuals, uh, other individuals in unsolved sex offense cases in this country. That fact was hidden from the judge when the DAs filed their affidavit for arrest warrant. The judge wasn't told about that. Barry Morphy wasn't told about that. They all knew about that, all of them. We just learned that there was a sexual assault case recently dismissed in the Lemon Judicial. Um, of course, because it was dismissed, that case is now sealed. We believe there were discovery violations, but because it's sealed, we aren't for sure. What are your takes on you know dismissed cases being sealed and therefore Hiding potential prosecutorial misconduct. The question is, what's my take on um, cases being sealed in prosecutorial misconduct? And you know, then how do you get information about it? I guess is the transparency part of it. You know, all I can say to that is, I want there to be, I want the DAs to be transparent. I want the DAs to be held accountable. And um, there are issues with. Um, you know, filings that are, for example, uh, not in the public eye. There are reasons for that. You know, if it's a sex assault case and someone was uh, wrongly accused and the case is dismissed, they have a right to seal their case. And, you know, I think everybody can see um, what harm is caused by this illuminated media spotlight that, for example, Linda Stanley and members of her team caused over the period of a year where they were talking to the press while the case was being prosecuted and making statements, you know, implying that Barry was guilty, violating the rules of professional conduct. And so, you know, the media has, you know, a, you know, a job, you have a responsibility to the people that you report about because you villainize them, you know? And, and in this case, the media assisted in villainizing Barry Morphew and for that matter, all the rest of the people on the PEP website. So it is, to me, in order for a person to move on with their life sometimes, it could be that they need to seal the fact that their name and their record isn't held in the public eye anymore. But you know, my issue isn't that. My issue is the prosecutors hiding and concealing evidence and paperwork and information. It's not so much about the courts. Um, all I can, the question is, has, have the prosecutors given me any information of whether or not they consider Barry Morphy to be a suspect? The case is dismissed. He's presumed innocent. Mary, Barry Morphy is back to the same place that the rest of us are, other than the fact that his wife is still missing. And 
I have information from the October 2022 hearing that we held that is uh, um, that was uh, video recorded with permission of the court that is on my website. And the prosecutor implies that the reason why they don't want to give back Barry Morphy's property is because they believe that they're going to find her body and he's going to be responsible for it, which is absurd. Because there's absolutely no evidence that um, rises to the level of probable cause in this case, in Barry Morphew's case, in his life. Um, so um, that's all the information I have. I wish the prosecutors communicate with the victims of their mother's disappearance, Mallory and Macy Morphew. They don't have any information. They're listening in on the Zoom as well. And what do you think? Why do you think this misconduct that you're alleging within the 11th Judicial District continues to happen? What is going on? These discovery violations, why do you think this keeps happening? So the question is, why do I think that these discovery violations keep happening in the 11th Judicial District? Why does it keep happening? I don't think the 11th Judicial District is unique. I think it's happening everywhere. And that the evidence is actually um, all over the newspapers all over the news, all over this country. It just so happens that, um, you know, I think the more high profile cases are, the higher the stakes are. And uh, prosecutors tend to be a little bit more, um, commit more misconduct, um, you know, and the challenge to win. And in the, in, in, in the belief that, and the confirmation bias that, that they believe what they were told by law enforcement is true and they can't see outside of that suspicion vision that they have. And I don't think it's just the 11th Judicial District. Um, I think I shined a big light on it as a result of the Morphew prosecution, excuse me, the failed Morphew prosecution, the wrongful Morphew prosecution, um, and the lawyers that are working in that Judicial District have continued to try and obtain discovery in that case but it's happening all over the state and all over this country. I get phone calls from lawyers, public defenders and private lawyers all over the state. Often, what do I do? How do I do this? How do I explain this to my client? What's the remedy? How do I get a judge to finally do something? The judge isn't doing anything. The judge thinks that everything they say is true. The judge thinks that I'm not telling the truth, which by the way, happened in our case, in the very beginning, in the Morphew case, it was month two. I told the judge that we do not have all of the discovery. I know we don't have it. And Jeff Lindsay stood in court as an officer of the court who took an oath to follow the Constitution, not just parts of it, but all of it. And he said, Judge, we're following the Constitution. We're following Rule 16. They have all of it. It's false. It's false. And we continued to point that out. And the judge just kind of kept saying, well, you know, okay, you know, prove to me you don't have it all. Well, I think everyone here knows it's hard to prove what you don't have. Um, and about eight months after that fact, when they dumped approximately 30 pages of emails and texts between law enforcement and between the DA's office, we found out how much critically favorable evidence they withheld and misrepresented in the affidavit and at the preliminary hearing. Do you deny that prosecutors have a job to do, though? They've got, there are bad guys out there and bad girls. You know, I mean, they have a job to do. They do. If they don't have prosecutors, we're going to have more victims. I didn't say, I didn't, this, this sign doesn't say defund DAs. I don't want to defund DAs. I don't want to eradicate DA's offices. We need ethical prosecutors. I want to protect ethical prosecutors. That's what I want. And I think all prosecutors should want that. Uplift those that follow the rules in the Constitution. We want those to be our leaders. They, they are public and elected officials. We want to be able to trust them. That's what we want. So I believe we need prosecutors. We need ethical ones. This case was dismissed without prejudice. What is your take on that? What does that mean for prosecutors? And are you calling for change on that front? So the question is, this case was dismissed without prejudice. And um, how do I feel about that? And what can I do about that? 
When the case was dismissed without prejudice on um, April 19th, 2022, I was uh, stunned. So was my team, and so was Barry Morphew and his daughters. It was very emotional, especially the reasoning behind it, because they believed they had found her body, which, which everybody wanted to be true. Everybody wanted to be true. But we believe that allegation, that statement by the DAs was made in bad faith. And I made an argument to the court on that day saying I wanted to go to trial on the case. I didn't want the case dismissed. I wanted the case to go forward and I wanted them to try and prove their case because I knew we would exonerate Mr. Morphew. I knew we would. But the judge said the law it's true, they have a right to dismiss the case, but they can do it without prejudice, meaning they can charge him again someday with a new complaint, with new probable cause, because they were coming to him saying that they had good faith belief that she was buried. Well, I don't know what the judge would do if it was the same judge and heard the same argument now, a year later, seeing that there's no body that's been found. I don't know what he would do. I, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm figuring out what I'm going to do about that and whether or not there's a motion to dismiss that I can file. Um, but you know, the legalities of everything need to be looked at and questioned. But I 100% believe, as my team does, that Barry Morphew is innocent. He did not hurt his wife. He was wrongly accused and prosecuted. And the information that was brought against him was false, misleading, and much of it concealed. What do you think happened to Suzanne? I don't know. I think that we would know if the prosecution and law enforcement didn't spend so much time concealing evidence in the case. How long do you think it's going to take to pass a law um, ending you know, prosecutors full immunity? So the question is, how long do I think it's going to take for a law to pass to eradicate, to eliminate prosecutorial immunity? So when I tried to get the bill passed in 2020, I had two sponsors. They were great, the legislature. One is now um, the, actually the uh, city attorney for Denver. The other one's still in the legislature. And they were battling the DAs because the DAs were saying this. This doesn't happen in Colorado. Prosecutors don't violate the rules in Colorado. That's other places. That's like Curtis Flowers case, you know, in Mississippi. That's a Central Park Five case, like Corey Wise, who's on the board of PEP. That happens other places. That doesn't happen here. That doesn't happen in Colorado. Even though we pointed out it happened to Tim Masters, et cetera, Clarence Moses L. No, that just, that's just not, it's not, that's not a wave here. No, it's a, it, this is why PEP's website is dedicated right now to Colorado cases. It does happen in Colorado. It's pervasive, it's a persistent problem, and it's an epidemic. So I think this next legislative session in 2024, I hope we can get it to pass. It took you a year to complete this complaint. Yes. How would you describe what you believe you uncovered? Um, it took me a year to file this complaint, and how do I describe um, how it feels, what I uncovered? Um, so on that note, too, um, you know, I am working with my team and will be filing a civil rights complaint um, against law enforcement officers and the investigative work that the DAs conducted on uh, the Morphew matter. So the law stands now that you can sue prosecutors for investigative work, which is usually, usually um, up to the point of a complaint being filed, usually. So the DA's office was involved in the investigation. In fact, DA uh, investigator Alex Walker was there the moment when the call came in that Suzanne was missing. He worked on the case for an entire year. So we believe the DA's office is, 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 is culpable and liable under civil rights laws. So we will be fine that. So in conjunction with writing that complaint, the civil rights complaint for damages for Barry Morphew and his daughters, um, and writing this, um, this complaint uh, that went to the Office of Attorney Regulation Council, how I feel is really sad. That's how I feel.
it is, um, it's uh, really, there's so much wrong in this world right now. I think we all know with the guns and the unhoused and um, the state of our, you know, bipartisan battles and it's a lot that we're taking in. And this has just been my window. For 30 years, I've been practicing criminal defense. And um, it's really sad that this is one thing that has persisted. And I've seen so many lives damaged, both victims of crimes and my clients who are wrongly accused. And um, it's so easy to change. And there's been so many studies and research. It's all on the website under resources and policy papers. It has been spanned 20 years. And the answer is the same. The only way to hold them accountable is to deter them from committing more misconduct, is to have them have skin in the game and have the potential to sue them. And don't worry, they won't be sued if they don't violate the Constitution. It's as simple as that. Any other questions? What's, uh, what is burying his daughters up to in the last year when they were I don't know if they want to reveal what their private life is up to. Um, I think they had the microscope on them long enough. But I will say that um, they are three of the most beautiful human beings I've ever known um, that grace me with kindness and love and uh, vice versa uh, very often. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you.